Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm truly sorry I can't join you in person today, but it's great to see Hong Kong opening up and welcoming people back to your vibrant city. I'm grateful to both the chairman and CEO of the Hong Kong Insurance Authority, Stephen Clement, for asking me to join you and share a few remarks from a global supervisory perspective during what looks like a rich day of discussion. I appreciate the theme of today's forum, reflect, reset, revive for a resilient future. In my remarks, I'd like to reflect on the lessons that we've learned as the IS in recent years about the critical role that global cooperation and coordination among supervisors plays, uh, but also uh, with the insurance industry uh, and how this is important to tackling what are increasingly global challenges and opportunities. Specifically, I like to reflect on three areas where a globally coordinated approach is critical. Firstly, maintaining financial stability. Second, responding to climate change. And third, embracing appropriate financial innovation. These are all areas in which we need to reset and revive our approaches if we are to have a more resilient future. Starting with the financial stability theme, the need for effective approach approaches to building resilience are more acute than ever. While we hoped for some light in 2022 in the wake of the COVID pandemic, instead, the global economic storm clouds have been darkening. While the IMF projections for Asia look somewhat more upbeat, insurers in the region can still expect to feel the effects of the distinct slowdown in growth rates predicted for advanced economies. In addition, the spike in inflationary pressures in many regions is driving the type of tightening monetary policy cycles last seen decades ago. While rising interest rates can provide some benefits to life insurers, this may be countered by claims inflation, increased cost of living pressures and market volatility. We are already seeing credit risk and liquidity risks increasing as markets adjust to a changing economic outlook, a rapidly changing economic outlook and new market dynamics, some of which are untested, such as how high inflation will play out in a financial sector now much more dominated by non-bank financial intermediation than in previous inflationary episodes. Social issues, including aging societies and digitalization, plus the impacts of climate change, present additional challenges to insurers. And last but not least, increased geopolitical risk, in particular the invasion of Ukraine, have already impacted societies, global supply chains and financial markets, but are also likely to have longer term impacts on globalization. This is a formidable mix of risks. At the IS, we are regularly asking ourselves what these developments mean for the insurance sector and how we need to approach them as a global community of supervisors. What is clear is that there are significant benefits in supervi supervisory cooperation at the global level. To understand these growing risks, to undertake timely analysis, and to collectively discuss appropriate supervisory responses to help maintain financial stability and policyholder protection. The IIS's holistic framework provides us with a rigorous approach to undertake our global risk assessment uh, and provides a strong empirical basis on which to agree on coordinated supervisory responses. Our global monitoring exercise, or GME, allows us to consider risks in the insurance sector both from an activities and an entities-based perspective. It covers quantitative and qualitative data from close to 60 of the largest global insurance groups and supervisory authorities comprising more than 90% of global gross written premiums, therefore a rich empirical basis. 
We supplement this with regular conversations with CROs and CEOs of these major groups as part of our broader engagement. I want to thank the Insurance Authority here in Hong Kong for the very active role it's played both in developing and implementing the IIS's global monitoring exercise and the relevant supervisory material. As one of the 10 jurisdictions chosen last year to take part in an intensive targeted jurisdictional assessment of this supervisory material, the results for Hong Kong show high levels of observance of these standards. Uh, and I really think this is testament to the hard work over the last few years that Clement and his team have put into establishing sound macroprudential supervisory practices here in Hong Kong as befits its role as a global financial center. The GME indicates that on aggregate, systemic risk scores in the insurance sector remain significantly lower than in the banking sector. That's the good news. However, the increasing trend in systemic risk scores in the insurance sector, albeit off a low base, uh, as well as the higher systemic risk scores for some insurance groups, combined with the growing macroeconomic risks facing the insurance sector, mean that there is no room for complacency. Key drivers behind the increases in systemic risk scores include a significant increase in insurers' holdings of more complex illiquid assets, increases in OTC derivative transactions, higher short-term funding, including repo transactions, and greater interconnectedness, including an increased use of cross-border reinsurance, all of which in combination contribute to potential vulnerabilities in the face of rapidly increasing interest rates. Uh, the IS has identified credit risk and liquidity risk as particular areas for more granular analysis next year. Turning now uh, to risks from climate change. So we know the impact of climate change will be felt on both sides of insurers' balance sheets. On the asset side, it, prevent, it presents economy-wide transition risks. On the liability side, there are rapidly mounting physical risks. The world is falling well short of the level of ambition needed to make an impact on global warming and sadly, the recent COP27 discussions did not advance the action needed on how we can get to the 1.5 degrees uh, target by 2050. As a result, unfortunately, both physical and transition risks are increasing for the insurance sector as actions to address climate change are delayed. This truly is a global challenge that demands a global response. For supervisors and insurers alike, this means we need to heighten our focus on understanding the accelerating transition and physical risks for the insurance sector and, in, and on ensuring that insurers take appropriate action in response. We're actively equipping our members in this regard We've completed capacity building workshops on climate risk scenario analysis that saw more than 200 supervisors from around the world taking part. These engagements highlighted that many supervisors are unfortunately only at the start of their work on assessing climate risks. So much work remains to be done. We'll also launch consultations next year on supervisory practices related to climate risk, building off our already rich uh, existing base of work in this area. The first consultation in quarter one will look broadly at governance issues, in particular guidance on how climate related risks should be considered in the context of our insurance core principles dealing with corporate governance and risk management. These standards go to the heart of how we as supervisors expect insurers to integrate risks into their governance frameworks. Our second consultation 
will consider the climate risk considerations for a wider range of insurance core principles, including market conduct uh, and macroprudential supervision. We'll also return to the issue of climate risk scenarios, where we, where we will work on supporting consistent international supervisory practices on this important tool for assessing climate risk and hopefully thereby addressing market fragmentation issues. And lastly, we'll look at the issue of protection gaps against natural catastrophes and disaster risk, specific, specifically the role that supervisors can play in helping to address this significant uh, and growing problem, including in the Asia region. Lastly, uh, I want to briefly touch on the theme of technological innovation, another paradigm shifting trend in the insurance sector, uh, and one that knows no national boundaries. Our global focus here is on building and sharing knowledge amongst our diverse membership on both the benefits uh, but also the risks of digitalization. Uh, and we look to the Asian region in particular uh, as a cradle of technological innovation, but also a source of supervisory innovation in this area. We will shortly publish a summary of the work we've undertaken on artificial intelligence and machine learning, distributed ledger technology and decentralized finance, and application programming interfaces and open data. We found some interesting results. These innovations have shown some success in improving the customer experience, pricing and profitability of existing business, uh, but has been rather less utilized by insurers to date to expand their underwriting footprint into new, potentially higher risk market segments. The changes also come with some amplified challenges, such as data security, cyber risks, money laundering and terrorist financing, and legal and reputational risks. I mean, this is an area where we are only just starting to have the evidence and, on, and experience on which to reflect, but where we will continue to support the learning process through our global supervisory platforms. It will likely call for some deep questions about how supervisors may need to reset for the future, conversations that we would be keen to continue to engage in with all of you. So thank you very much for the time. And in closing, I think a key message is that a common factor amongst the issues that I've touched on today remains the global nature of the risks and opportunities that the insurance sector faces. The challenges are considerable, but given the commitment to cooperation and collaboration that I see around the table across all of our membership at the IIS, I feel comfortable that we will be able to move forward confidently and cohesively on these issues. Thank you once again for the invitation to speak today I look forward to the important insights coming out of your discussions and the continued strong collaboration to come. Thank you.